Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today I'm going to share with you guys my top 10 Cydia tweaks once jailbroken using the Evasion Untethered Jailbreak for iOS 7 through 7.0.4. Now initially I was planning on making this video immediately following the release of Evasion 7, however due to the fact that Mobile Substrate wasn't updated to include support for iOS 7 and the iPhone 5S until recently, and that not a lot of tweaks were available for all devices, I had to delay my video, so now here here we are and I'm going to share with you guys my top 10 Cydia tweaks. Now these are the 10 tweaks that I have installed on my iPhone 5S right now and I'm going to bring that over in just a second to talk about it. However, almost all of these tweaks will also work on other devices such as the latest iPad Air and the latest iPad Mini that's powered by Apple's A7 processor. So yes, these tweaks do work on Apple's latest devices. They will also work on older devices that are also jailbroken and again, I'm really excited to share this video with you guys because it's been highly requested by my viewers. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to make this video as simple and quick as possible, while also giving you guys the most details on each individual tweak as I possibly can. All right, while most of these tweaks aren't in any particular order, I am going to start by sharing with you guys my top two favorite tweaks throughout Cydia. So first of all, we have Activator. Now this is a pretty old tweak and almost every single jailbroken device has it installed. However, not many people take advantage of it and they don't know its full potential. So what Activator allows you to do is essentially set different triggers for various actions. For instance, I can set a trigger to do a three finger pinch on any screen and have it go to the home screen. So let me show you guys that again. So when I'm inside of an application, I can do either a three, four, or five finger pinch because I've set it up inside of Activator to go to the home screen. As you can see there, again, it went directly to the home screen from the Activator app. Now you can do so many things with Activator and I'm not going to go over everything. I'm just going to show you guys what I have set up with Activator and what my personal setup is for the Activator tweak. So first of all, like I detailed before, I have it set to go to the home screen when I do between a three to five finger pinch within any application. So that's kind of like multitasking gestures on the iPad. And you can set it up for free again because Activator is a completely free tweak. Now I also have Activator set up to activate Siri when I do a four finger spread from anywhere. So when I just spread my fingers like so, it will bring up Siri. Now I'm going to exit again just by doing that four finger pinch on top of Siri. Now I can and also bring up the multitasking interface by doing a three finger spread. So I'm going to do that now. As you can see, I'm in the multitasking view. Now, aside from that, I also have a five finger spread set up to do a screenshot. So that one's kind of tricky to activate because it's difficult with such a small display and bigger hands. So I'm going to try to do that one last time here. There we go, as you can see, it did take a screenshot just with a five finger pinch. Now that actually reminds me of something else I have set up. I have a two finger pinch on icons on the springboard to directly lock the device. As you can see, when I pinch on the icons themselves, it locks the iPhone 5S here. So let's try that again. I can actually get this every single time off camera, it's kind of hard viewing this through the actual display of my camera though. But as you can see, just by pinching the home screen here, it takes me directly to the lock screen. So it locks the device. Now that's pretty much all I have set up inside of Activator. I do however have one other thing set up. I can double tap the status bar to bring me to the home screen from wherever I am. So that way it makes it easier to operate the iPhone using a single hand. Now moving on, like I said before, my second favorite tweak is Flux. Now this is absolutely amazing. Essentially what it allows users to do is bring down the color temperatures at night so their devices are easier to look at. Let me go ahead and activate it. As you can see, this is what it looks like when the sun goes down and when it becomes nighttime. So it's a lot easier to look at the display and it doesn't put as much strain on your eyes. You can even see the difference between the whites over here on the iPad and on the iPhone with flux activated. I usually keep it at about 26 to 2700 at night. So that's a great setting and I recommend using it for flux. Next we have a fairly simple tweak that's been around forever. It is a premium tweak inside of Cydia. It's called Barrel and it offers custom page transitions. Now I just have it set up to do a random mode. So when I swipe between the pages here, you'll notice a random effect every time. Unfortunately, not every effect works right now. And that is because again, we are on iOS 7 and I also have a couple of other tweaks installed that kind of conflict with some Barrel transitions. However, 
to the most popular ones such as Curl, which I'm sure you'll see it in just a second, um, works just fine. And that's probably my favorite one out of all the barrel transitions. I don't tend to use them all that much, but when I do use barrel and when I have it enabled, that's the one I tend to keep on all the time. So let me open it up here and just set it really quick. So I have the curl and roll away one. That's the one that I like. There's also the other curl direction that looks quite nice as well. All right, moving right along, we have BioProtect. This is absolutely awesome and it's exclusive to the iPhone 5S, unfortunately, because it has the Touch ID fingerprint sensor built into the home button. So what it allows you to do is effectively protect all of your applications simply by using your fingerprint. So as you can see, now I'm inside of the BioProtect settings and I can enable which applications I want to be protected. So for now, I just have it set up to Cydia. So when I try to open Cydia, it brings up this BioProtect prompt and I either have the option to cancel it or I can scan my fingerprint with one of the fingers that's included in Touch ID. Let me show you what happens if it doesn't recognize the finger. So I'm just going to use a finger that I don't have set up. As you can see, it says that the authentication has failed. And when I try to bring it up again, and when I use a finger that's actually included in Touch ID, it works and it brings it right up. Now, because I have virtual home installed as well, which is something that I'm going to talk about later, it does something kind of weird when I hold my finger on for too long. But if you're able to master the timing, you can use the two tweaks in conjunction with one another. And actually, BioProtect even works from within inside multitasking. So if you hand your device to someone and you don't want them to use a certain application, such as messages, or in this case, I just have it set up to Cydia, it will also bring up the BioProtect prompt, again, when just trying to activate the application from within inside the multitasking view. And it actually brought City up there, but again, because I also have that virtual home tweak installed, it didn't actually launch into the City application. All right, next we have Flip Control Center. So from within inside the settings application, you can see I have a couple of different options. I'm not going to go over all of them, but essentially what it allows you to do is customize what you have down below on the bottom for Control Center and on the top. It even adds more settings to Control Center so now I have the option to enable or disable silent mode on my iPhone 5S, enable or disable LTE, cellular connections, VPN or virtual private network. I also have the tethering option as well. And my favorite addition is location services. And in order to get it installed, you'll need to add a custom repo. So let me just activate Cydia with BioProtect here. And what you need to do is go down to the bottom where it says manage and then simply go to sources. So this is the main screen for manage. So manage source sources, edit, add, and you're going to need to add this source right here. It's just HTTP colon forward slash forward slash RPE tri.ch forward slash repo. I'm also going to have that down below in the more info. If you didn't catch it right now, don't worry, you can just find it there. All right, moving on, the next two I'm going to talk about are two long-standing tweaks by the same developer. They're InfiniBoard and InfiniDock. Essentially, what they allow your device to do is have multiple icons on a single page and do vertical scrolling and also multiple icons in your dock and do horizontal scrolling. So as you can see with InfiniBoard set up, here, I can have multiple pages vertically, and I can also have multiple pages horizontally inside of the dock. Normally, the dock obviously doesn't have this scrolling capability, but with InfiniDock installed, it does. And you can also add custom settings so that you can have multiple applications actually on a single page. So I could have five to 10 icons here instead of the traditional four. Now, again, there are a few settings for both of these, but I'm not going to go over them now. All right, and for a very simple one, we have Blurred. This is a new tweak as of today, essentially what it allows you to do is toggle the black keyboard for your device. So it's easier to look at at night and it's definitely great in conjunction with Flux. I really recommend it. So let me give you guys a quick difference here. Inside of the Safari application with Blurred enabled, I have a black keyboard. Now let me switch back to the settings application, disable Blurred, and then go back to Safari. And when I bring up the keyboard again, I'm just going to hit cancel and then bring it up so it refreshes. I have the traditional white keyboard. So Blurred again allows you to toggle the new black or dark keyboard that will be made widely available in iOS 7.1. However, it's likely that 7.1 will patch the jailbreak. So if you want your black keyboard now on your device without having to update to 7.1 when it's released to the public in the future, definitely download Blurred from Cydia. Okay, and officially the last two tweaks I wanted to talk about are MyY and My3G. 
So let's first talk about my why. For those of you who don't know, this is a premium tweak that allows you to enable tethering on your devices. And actually my iPad just died there in the background. So just forgive that and don't pay any attention to it. I'm just going to leave it up on the screen throughout the duration of this video. But again, we're primarily focused on the tweaks. So let's talk about my why some more. My why allows you to take advantage of Wi-Fi tethering. You can also use USB tethering and Bluetooth tethering and even my why on demand which allows you to connect to something like an iPad, for instance, and it intelligently enables and disables tethering when the device that you have connected to your host needs internet access. So it doesn't consume as much battery as if you were to just have Wi-Fi hotspot enabled throughout the entire time you were using your device. So for instance, when you go to lock your iPad, when you're using it with the MyWi app, it will save battery. And another thing about MyWi is it tries to conceal your tethering usage as normal data. So that way your carrier doesn't catch on. However, if you were using it to do something like play an MMO or download multiple gigabytes a month, they might very well catch on. And again, the next one that's very similar to MyWi is My3G. Essentially, it allows you to unrestrict your applications for cellular data usage. So for instance, I primarily have it set to the App Store. So traditionally, the App Store will not let you download applications that exceed 100 megabytes while over an LTE or 3G connection for instance. Well, with my 3G, it tricks any application that you have enabled to think that it's running over Wi-Fi when in reality, again, it's running over your cellular connection. So it's really great if you have an unlimited data plan and you're trying to use it with, again, either the App Store or some sort of VoIP or Voice over IP application. It works really great and it's very reliable. Now, finally, I wanted to discuss a tweak that I actually made a video on recently and I also discussed it previously in this video. It's called Virtual Home and it's the 11th bonus tweak in this video. It allows you to use the Touch ID sensor as a home button. So without actually pressing the home button, you can utilize its capabilities. So you might not have caught on there, but instead of actually pressing the home button, I can simply tap it and the metal band around the home button detects that I have a finger placed on it and then it acts accordingly. So when I just tap it, it takes me to the home screen. When I tap and hold it, brings up the multitasking view. Now someone pointed out something really great the other day when trying to activate Siri with virtual home enabled, it doesn't quite work because it just brings up the multitasking view here. So I use it in conjunction with activator. And again, remember I showed you guys in the beginning of this video when I do a four finger spread it brings me to Siri. So as you can see, I have Siri now without actually having to use the home button. So it's really great. And also it kind of conflicts with BioProtect just a little bit, but you have to get the timing exactly right with BioProtect and it'll work just fine. So again, these are my top 10 tweaks with the addition of Virtual Home as my 11th bonus tweak. Virtual Home also allows you to directly unlock your device without actually pushing the home button. You can simply tap on it and and it works really great. And Activator even includes some similar functionality, but it doesn't have the hold down on the home button with Touch ID to bring up the multitasking view. So these are some really great tweaks. I highly recommend them and I use them throughout the day. Of course, I will be pushing out more top tweak videos when developers update their tweaks and release new tweaks to Cydia. So of course, just be sure to stay tuned and to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos, just be sure to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Also, if you guys want a chance to enter to win a $100 Amazon gift card in this video, just be sure to rate it up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section. Once your comments have been posted, you'll automatically gain an entry. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.